Previously on the Rod Peterson Show. Hard Knocks debuted uh, the 2021 season last night on HBO. I watched it featuring America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. And it's funny, this morning USA Today had a headline, five takeaways from Hard Knocks. I started reading it. I'm like, what am I reading this for? I don't need your five takeaways. I got a couple. Number one, I was not the biggest Dak Prescott fan. I think people that watch this show know that. I'm less of a Dak Prescott fan coming out of watching this show. What a whiner. What a whiner. Look, I understand you want to take every rep. I get it. You can't take every single rep. Did you notice that? Yeah. He was very upset. That he couldn't. That he was pulled early in this training camp a couple weeks ago because they want to give the backups some work. Danny Bonaducci, the backup quarterback. Well, Ben Danucci is his name, but I call him Danny Bonaducci, which means nothing to you, do you? He's a star <laughs> of the Partridge family. Anyways, right. uh, that was one. Dak, come on, stop whining. Let these other guys have some work. And then, of course, he ends up getting hurt. Two, the biggest one was Jera. When he was talking to the team, I thought it was the head therapist. You said it was the team doctor. Yeah, it was but, one of the two. Yeah. So he's writing with an HB pencil <laughs> these notes on Dak talking with the medical staff on the phone. And we all take away different things. But my thing was this. He's eating a McDonald's Egg McMuffin, Jera Jones. And people are saying, well, what's odd about that? Eh, he's worth seven, eight billion dollars. How's it? He not have a Red Seal chef at his ready? You know, here you go, Mr. Jones. We, you know, with his choice, an omelet station. Yeah, exactly. He's a, got Benedict a, or something like. <laughs> right, an omelet station. A, a guy c- cutting a roast at the end of the table. Jerry, are you, when you're done with the trainer, we have your choice here of ham, <laughs> roast beef. Uh, do you want that in your omelet, Mr. Jones? Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. Somebody got a fly swatter? Yeehaw! Uh, it was a shot of Prairie Jesus is really what it was. It was. You'd think we, we'd be getting used to it, but it would, we, we never get used to it. We never get tired of good things happen. This life doesn't get old. No. It was a nice little distraction from the real world, and here we are today for a coffee session. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hello, Canada. Canadian sports fans around the world, welcome to the RP Show. The mics are hot, they tell me. And so are we, Darren Moose Dupont. How you doing over there, Moose? You know, Rod, I'm doing great. New week. Yeah, back here at Gray Eagle, I love it. Yeah, getting getting back into the swing of things here, and we're ready to talk sports for the next two hours here on Game Plus Television across all ten provinces and 31 states on Game Plus. Uh, yeah, I see people tweeting at us saying so much to talk about today on the RP Show, uh, and there is, and we're gonna have a lot of fun. Gonna tell some stories of our weekend. Our guests today are Jeff Reinbold, the special teams coordinator of the Montreal Alouettes and NFL analyst for Sky Sports in Europe, and also. 10-year pro footballer, Grey Cup champion, Mike Abumeshrik. He'll be joining us in Hour 2. Before we jump into the Quick 6 show topics, um, I think, I guess what we should do is open up with the uh, photo album. Why not do that? Yeah, before idea. we tell anybody, because it was such a busy weekend out here in Calgary. Uh, producer Clark, if you don't mind rolling that, or whoever does that back there in the bunker. This was here Saturday night. These photos are in no particular order. This was uh, Pete Pocket, who's become a close friend of mine. Elvis Tribute Show, Saturday night, here, right here in the event center. I'm telling you, the oldies were both in his song set and in the crowd. Uh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Walkers and wheelchairs, as far as the eye could see. And they were bopping to the oldies. Memory lane for those old folks. It uh, really was. You know, I, like, I had a great time in the crowd. And, you know, watching it and, and, and even watching the crowd. They got so emotional. There was tears. Yeah. There was jiving and moving around. It was awesome to see. Uh, Two-hour show plus an intermission. And lo and behold, Sunday morning, I run into Elvis himself, Pete Pockett in the gym here at the Gray Eagle. And we worked out together and we swapped stories and it was just fantastic. So watch for Pockett Productions, Pete Pockett and his Elvis tribute show coming to your town. 
because they're currently on tour all across North America. Just a super guy. So this is Friday night. This was at the Flames Community Arenas. The U of R Cougars were playing the Mount Royal Cougars. Cougars versus Cougars. It was my alma mater versus my hometown team. How about that? And we see the guy in the middle is Peter Labardius, the ageless Peter Labardius. Darren, and your hair looks fantastic there, by the way. <laughs> Anything you. you wanted to say about that visit? Uh, no, it was, it was an awesome visit. It was great to uh, catch up with, with Lou, and we had a really good chat. The hockey was awesome. Unfortunately, well, depending on what side you're on. If you're a Calgary fan, it was great because with yeah. a minute five left, they tied it, then they took the lead, and you never know who you're going to run into when you're Flames broadcaster town. Peter Labardius there at the... Uh, you hogged him, by the way, all night. I didn't get a chance to talk to him. Saturday, <laughs> you were busy with your own conversations. Uh, Saturday, we went up to Banff. It's just a short little jaunt. Moose and I went out there for coffee. We watched the Titans-Bengals game. Darren didn't talk all the way home. So Banff, always a great uh, idea. What, 45 minutes west of Calgary was yeah. amazing. Uh, what else do we have? I think that might be it. That might, if it is, let me know, guys. Uh, no, what am I talking about? Sunday's watch party at the Shark Club, Deerfoot Meadows. Some of our closest friends. I think this is the last photo, and it's perfect, because we do have one funny story about this before we move on. I uh, just want to say hey to Brock and the crew down there. Ryan, for looking after us. The photo album is brought to you by Great Western Brewing Company, brewed in Saskatchewan, made with premium Saskatchewan ingredients. Original 16s unfiltered for peak flavor. Purchase at a store near you today. Can I just say this before we jump into the football on the wild football weekend we're sitting there at the bar we're watching the games and I'll, i hear this gal because there were some people that came down for the watch party this gal over my shoulder goes oh my god it's rod peterson i didn't even look back i'm like who's who is playing a, tr a trick on us right and, she, and moose oh my god i watch you guys every day on game plus network i'm like She's legit. And her boyfriend was there. She'd be in her mid to late 20s, right? She goes, big sports better. I'm a big sports better. So I love you guys. Watch your show every day. And then they went around, and she was hugely into that Chiefs-Bills game. Like she had some change on it. You know well, what I mean? Of course. Who doesn't? Dude? But it, it, she didn't know that we were having a watch party. She just showed up with her boyfriend. The regulars there at the Shark Club, and I was... Somewhat flabbergasted. Yeah. Stuff never... I never get used to that. You never get used to it. Even, you know, it doesn't matter how much it happens. You don't get used to it, but it's fun to see, and it's good to, you know, we had a, a couple of viewers, some viewers show up here on Monday, and we didn't know who they were, but they were viewers of the show, and, you know, we, only, we always sometimes think, oh, if you're not commenting on YouTube, we don't, you're not watching the show, you know what I mean? We think everybody that watches the show is writing in, and that's not the case, so it's fun to see and meet some of the people who watch, and we've never met. Well, I appreciate her, I appreciate everybody that came down to the Shark Club, and we'll do it again. All right. Can we, uh, can we hit the quick six show horn? Show topic horn. Thank you, Greg. So here we go. Casino. To the games. Patrick Mahomes found Travis Kelsey in the end zone early in overtime. And the Kansas City Chiefs rallied to beat the Buffalo Bills 42-36 on Sunday night in a sizzling finish to a wild divisional round weekend. The lead changed hands three times in the final two minutes of regulation before Harrison Butker, who earlier missed a field goal and extra point, drilled a 49-yarder for Kansas City as time expired to force overtime. We can spend two hours on this game alone. Okay, we feel bad for Josh Allen, obviously the Bills quarterback who thought he'd had the game won. But this is all that anybody wants to talk about today, and that is the NFL's overtime rules. So the Chiefs win the coin toss. They get the first possession. They go down the field and score a touchdown. That's how the rule states. Now, if they'd kicked a field goal, the Bills would have had the opportunity to come onto the field and score a touchdown. But, the, but it's, they changed the rules. How long ago did they tweak that? It's been a few years now. Not long, but not long, long enough. But long enough. And it's not – I thought it would be just – Bills fans complaining about the overtime rules because anytime any team loses with the current NFL rules, they complain about it. I used to complain about it, but people have convinced me. I've come around to realizing it's a team game. You can play defense. You can stop them. Now, I think the CFL and college football overtime rules are better where the two mini games, right? You have a chance to play offense and defense. They've tweaked that a little bit over the last couple of years, adding the mandatory two-point converts. But the NFL rule is what the NFL rule is, and it only becomes a problem come playoff time. But the poll question today for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center is quite simply, should the NFL change its overtime rules? Capital Auto Mall with dealerships all across the Canadian prairies, plus Southern California, 
uh, over 80% last I saw saying, yes, they need to change the rules. I'm saying no for the reasons I laid out. The NFL is a very smart league, Darren. If they thought there was a problem, they would have changed it. And they have it to what it is right now. Where, where are you on that? Oh, I don't know because I've been watching a lot of tennis, Rod. And in tennis, you can't lose until you have your serve broken. You know, you got to win by two. So that means you know, when you're on serve, we can keep going back and forth, much like the offenses. And you can't lose until they play better defense, right? And that's the same way in the CFL. It's the same way in college football. It's just not in the NFL. You know, I have a problem with people saying, you know, Josh Allen deserved to win that game. If he deserved to win it, he would have won it. It's not like he got the game taken away from him. He just didn't get the chance at the end to tie it and continue playing in overtime. Um, they've taken the step forward by, by allowing another possession. If it's a field goal, it used to be over on the first points of the game. So that, I think, is the gateway drug, if you, if, if you will. And I think they'll probably change it. And I think they probably should just simply because the entertainment could have continued last night, and that would have been fun to watch. I suppose. Uh, Arlen Bruce the third uh, watching today. He writes and he says, Chiefs 49ers in Super Bowl 56 rematch. He's predicting another all-red Super Bowl, which happened two years ago. Carlos watching in Indianapolis says, regarding the poll, the old sudden-death OT rule was fine and simple. If you don't like getting beat by a coin toss, then get a defense and stuff them like a taco time overtime taco. How about that? How about that? We're into it early. That's pretty good. We're into it early. The old rule was if the team that scored first, period. You just score first. Yeah. Field goal, safety, I guess, whatever. Whoever scored first won. They, they've amended it to you have to score a touchdown. I honestly can't see them changing it, to be honest. I can't. And, and I don't think they, they will. I think because talk Bills about it. fans are upset because the know. Bills are upset. I know. And again, you got to make sure you can remove yourself from the situation. You didn't lose because of the coin toss. You just didn't get a chance to tie. You lost because Patrick Mahomes went down the field and scored a touchdown. Tim in Las Vegas is watching. He's a newbie. I see. He says the Chiefs lost to New England on this same silly rule a couple of years ago, missing out on the Super Bowl. We KC people are glad we won, but we understand the rule is unfair and it needs to be changed. Now, here's another one from Edmonton, North Side, North Side YEG. He says that Buffalo-Kansas game was probably the best football game I've seen other than that CFL Classic on Canada Day, Saskatchewan versus Montreal, eh? Yeah, I called that one. Can the Canada Day comeback! That's Saskatchewan came back by, from 21 points down to beat the Alouettes in a great cup rematch. Here's the one other thing about the overtime. And you look at the game last night, and especially when you got into the final three minutes, it was zing, zing, zing. It was touchdown, game over. No, no, touchdown the other way. Okay, now it's over. No, field goal. Like it was back and forth, which feeds into the notion that, okay, we should both get a possession no matter what happens in overtime. But most NFL games aren't like that down the stretch, right? So that's why this rule's in. It's hard to score touchdowns in the National Football League. Last night, it wasn't. You know, in the earlier games, it was tough. There was more field goals, less touchdowns, and the overtime rules would have been fine. But it just happens that you were in a shootout, and it fits. One interesting thing, and we're going to move on to Tom Brady. But it's interesting talking to fans. Ryan, the bartender who was looking after us at Shark Club yesterday, I, he had a Colts jersey on, and obviously his team's not in the playoffs. So I said, who are you cheering for? He said, not Tampa. Tom Brady's got enough rings. And I'm like, you know what? I get it. You want to see a new champion? I'm still cheering for Tom, but I get it. Some people just want to see a new champion. And this year you're going to because, as the guy brought up the Canada Day comeback, 21 points. <sighs> Tom's like, we're down 27 to 3. <clears throat> Hold my beer. But Matthew Stafford threw for 366 yards and two touchdowns and Matt Gay's 30-yard field goal as time expired lifted the Los Angeles Rams to a divisional playoff victory over Tom Brady and the defending Buccaneers in Tampa. Tom rallied the Bucs from a 27-3 second-half deficit with help from three L.A. turnovers 
tying the game on Leonard Fournette's nine-yard run on fourth and inches with 42 seconds remaining. But the seven-time NFL champion didn't get an opportunity to finish the job. Stafford led the Rams downfield after the ensuing kickoff, using completions of 20 and 44 yards to league receiving leader Cooper Cup to set up Gay's winning field goal. So those were just Sunday's games. But I'm sitting right beside you, some of our closest friends at the Shark Club, and we were all writing off the box. Even I was. I didn't show it, though. I said, you don't count out Tom. He did. But I'm like, e. But I, I just, my commentary on that game is simply, the Buccaneers were awful for the first half. They were down 27-3, to three, taking stupid penalties, undisciplined penalties. Adamic and Sue. So they kind of did give the game away. Go ahead. You know, they did. That game being tied in the final minute is probably exactly what it should have been, right? It wasn't, you know, oh, oh the Rams let them back in it. Oh, you know, the Bucs are terrible. No, the Bucs let the Rams have a big lead, and then the Rams let the Bucs get back into it. And so it's probably where it should have been at the end, and then Matt Stafford made a play that puts him on the map and might define his career. You know, that long pass to Cooper Cup, which ended up setting up the game-winning field goal. You know, I waited all game, and I said to you, Matt Stafford's good for one, turn, one bad mistake. That's going to cost his team every game. He's, he's due for one. It never happened. Nope. The, the snap that went over his head, that's not on Matthew Stafford. The fumble on the one-yard line from Cam Akers, that's not on Matthew Stafford. He played a pretty good football game. And when it mattered, he stepped up. Arlen Bruce still watching the third. He says, I went 4-0 over the weekend on my picks. I'm ready for the big leagues in betting on games. I told you the Titans quarterback couldn't do it. Uh, he did, actually. If you recall, he did. Yeah. Arlen did say that. Um, I don't mind sprinkling in some comments here. Early on, Taco Time viewer takeover. Adam in Hamilton's watching, he says, the defenses are tired at the end of the game. The team that wins the coin toss has a big advantage based on an arbitrary flip of a round piece of metal. Still, it's better than it used to be. Ryan watching in Saratoga, New York. The reason why fans are clamoring for a new rule is because the team that won has a superstar quarterback. No need to change the rule. Your defense is responsible for stopping the other team. Uh, all kinds of interesting commentary coming in from our viewers today, and I appreciate it. Um, Darren knows how I felt last weekend as I moved to Saturday's games here in the warm-up. Robbie Gould continued his playoff perfection and moved the San Francisco 49ers one step away from their second Super Bowl appearance in three seasons with a 45-yard of 45 -yard field goal as time expired for a 13-10 upset of Green Bay on Saturday night. Aaron Rodgers dropped to 0-4 in career playoff matchups against the 49ers. And in Music City, rookie Evan McPherson kicked a 52-yard field goal as time expired, lifting the Cincinnati Bengals past the top-seeded Tennessee Titans. Moose's team, 1916, in an AFC divisional playoff game to end the NFL's longest active road playoff skid. The Bengals intercepted the aforementioned Ryan Tannehill three times, setting up two of McPherson's four field goals. Tennessee's Derrick Henry ran for a touchdown and finished with 66 yards. The floor is yours, young man, to describe the bedwetting by the Tennessee Titans Saturday afternoon. Oh, uh, and that's what it was, right? It was a bedwetting, and we've seen that at times this year. You know, the game against Houston, the game against the New York Jets, and I take nothing away from Joe Burrow. I mean, when he throw for 350 yards, but to me, watching that football game, the Bengals didn't really do a lot to win that football game. They took advantage of mistakes. You know, the opening play of the game, if I can script the play, what's going to happen on the opening play of the game, surely the team watching film all week can do it. They picked off Ryan Tannehill and turned that into a field goal and ends up being really the difference in the football game, you know, the field goals. I don't know that there's a lot of holes on the, on the Tennessee team. A lot of it is mental. A lot of it is in execution. I don't know if Ryan Tannehill's the answer, but outside of getting Aaron Rodgers in free agency, I don't know that there's an answer waiting for you. You know, I don't know that you want to pick up Deshaun Watson. I don't know that that's going to work out. So you're with Ryan Tannehill. You know, the biggest change for me with the Titans, and this is my last point, is that Arthur Smith left to Atlanta, and Todd Dowling came in to run the offense, and that seems to be the biggest issue for me is just, you know, the play calling. So that, that to me is, is what was missing was the offensive coordinator and Arthur Smith, who had had a really good rapport with Ryan Tannell. But super disappointing Saturday, as you know. Coaching, 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 coaching. 
getting the uh, goat horns in, in a lot of these losses. And by the way, my prediction is that Tom Brady comes back in Tampa in 2022, but Aaron Rodgers has played his last game in Green Bay. Unfortunately, after the Super Bowl, we're going to have to hear about it for six months. But it is what it is. Uh, Greg S. watching on YouTube, he says, I want to know the stat. How often does the team that wins the coin toss in overtime actually win the game? Is it 50-50? I have no idea. Trent in Norway watching. And I have my Norway flag, but it's in my room. He says, Norway here. This past weekend for the NFL was surprising for entertainment, but it all, but all the games were exciting. It looks like it'll be a Chiefs-LA Super Bowl. This time, the Rams will be ready. Uh, look, uh, we're just rolling. The, that was the point, the first point. First and second point, the weekend NFL games. We will be at Super Bowl, and I got to say that I hope the Rams are in it. I think it'll be a lot more exciting in Los Angeles if the Rams are in the Super Bowl. Yes. You dig? Oh, yeah. When we come back, we'll look at the conference championship matchups, the bet regal odds, the NHL from Sunday. I'm putting that off a little bit, at least until we come back in the second segment. We got some CFL news to discuss and uh, the ECHL suspending Jacob Panetta for a racial incident. He has defended himself. He's been cut by his team. Hey, more hockey talk. Uh, well, some hockey talk when we come back because we haven't had any yet. You're watching the RP Show. This has been the warm-up on Game Plus Television Network. We're live from Gray Eagle Resort and Casino, Calgary's entertainment destination. We're also live on YouTube and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. A new year means a new you. Pick up a new ride to match at Capital Ford for 2022. Custom order the perfect vehicle for you or check out our in-stock F-150s on the lot right now. Get into a pre-owned vehicle that's already on the lot and ready to roll. We need your used vehicle too. We pay big and you don't even have to buy from us. Plus, our service department is always here to help. Get special pricing on name brand tires, tire storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. Start the new year right at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. A legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Grey Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. What a goal by Play among, among legends at betregal.net. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. We'll treat you right. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline.
Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flametech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. RP Show continues on a Monday, episode number 681 of Daytime Sports Talk. Hey, got to say, if you got a chance to get out to Banff, do it. Beautiful weather this week, too. Oh. Above zero Celsius. Hey, everybody. Tough Tribe for Men contains aloe vera, botanicals, and antioxidants, traditionally known for their scalp and hair benefits. We are part of the clean beauty industry. Welcome to Clean Beauty for Men, available today at toughtribeformen.com. That's the number for toughtribeformen.com and Amazon Canada. If you like our flow, especially mooses, Tough Tribe for Men <laughs> is responsible. Okay, okay. To the hockey from Sunday, and we'll loop back around because there is a lot of football notes going on. Yeah. Surprisingly a lot for late January. Kasperi Kapanen and Jeff Carter scored nine seconds apart in the third period to erase a two-goal deficit, and Sidney Crosby scored the only goal of the shootout as the Pittsburgh Penguins rallied to beat the road-weary Winnipeg Jets 3-2 on Sunday. I see our Winnipeg viewers are saying, can we please not talk about it? When, when do we start to get worried about the, about the Winnipeg Jets? Kyle Connor and Blake Wheeler scored for Winnipeg, and Connor Halibut had 36 saves. The Jets finished 3-3-2 three, three, and two on an eight-game, three-week trip that began on January 2nd and included games in three different time zones. I don't know, 3-3-2 three, three, and two on the road isn't terrible. You want to go 500 on the road yeah. and well above 500 at home. And that's how you get into the playoffs. That's how you get into the playoffs. And so the Jets accomplished that. They're, they're a playoff team, okay? I don't think they've gone through the injuries this year that they did last. Winnipeg, chin up. Boys are coming home. And just like the Alberta teams, the second half is where the rubber meets the road, right? Oh, it is. Um, in Columbus, Seatown, Anton Forsberg stopped 35 shots as Ottawa ended a three-game slide, beating Columbus 2-1. In Newark, New Jersey, Carl Grundstrom scored the tie-breaking goal midway through the third period, and Cal Peterson made 23 saves to lift Los Angeles past New Jersey 3-2. And in Seattle, Mason Appleton scored his first goal in nearly two months, 26 seconds into the third period. Philip Grubauer made 28 saves, and the Seattle Kraken beat the Florida Panthers 5-3 Sunday night. In case you're watching or paying attention, it was the outhouse upset the penthouse. <laughs> Seattle swept both games this season against the Panthers, who entered the night tied with Tampa Bay for the most points in the National Hockey League with 61. Seattle beat the Panthers 4-1 back on November 27th in Sunrise, Florida. I was there. A loss that denied Florida an NHL record 12th consecutive home victory to start the season. My guy, Reed Johnson, from the Mark Cast podcast out of Seattle is watching right now. And for him, I say... Because I lost a bet. Crack and rule. Panthers drool. How about that? <laughs> I had to say. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Not like really. They, like no. They, like, Florida wins 12 in a row at home, and it's the Kraken that snap it. Florida goes into Tampa Bay, and what did they beat them this year? 7-1 to one or something against it was at, Tampa. It was in Sunrise. In Florida. It's like 9-3. And then they lose twice yeah. to Seattle. That's why we love sports, though. Right? why we love sports that and what happened yesterday in football is why we love sports oh, right yeah. you just we were sitting at the bar last <laughs> night and it got to overtime the guys beside us were getting a little annoying right can i say they were getting a little annoying well it was hard to concentrate on the game very distracting and the one guy who incidentally was wearing a top hat the other night that 
Last night he was wearing a fedora. The other night he was wearing a top hat. And they're saying that he owns this place. You, yeah. Where we all we have a live studio audience today, by the way. I'll, I, but I won't include them as much as I would like. He had a top hat on. What does he think? He's Daddy Warbucks? Isn't he the Monopoly guy? <laughs> right. I own this place. Yeah, no, I don't think you do. This is the, the same way you probably rolled into places thinking you owned them back in the day, too. <laughs> <laughs> it had crossed my mind. I'm like, God, I hope I wasn't as big a jerk as this. Well, they weren't really being jerks. No. They were just trying to horn their way into our discussion. We're like, guys, we're watching the football game here. Yeah. Zip it. Where was I when I started this story? Oh, why we love sports. Uh, why we, real life drama. Yeah. Real life drama. Real life soap opera. John Ohm. Ohm. He's watching in Winnipeg. He says the Jets are not getting the puck bounces. Hope they shine in front of 250 people at the hockey rink in Winnipeg. Friday, for sure, we were 100% COVID free on this show. I'm going to try and keep today 100% COVID free. Stay out of that. Not talking about truck convoys. Not talking about 250 people. What are they getting at Leafs games? Is it 500 now? Yeah. Joe Lazado is watching in Long Island, and he says, Top hat? Hello, Mr. Peanut. No kidding, right? <laughs> He's wearing a, he was wearing a top hat. Like, I should have done a... Next time. Yeah. He seems to roam around here quite I, a bit. I don't think it's the last time we'll pretty see good, him. Pretty good chance we'll see him again during our residency. That's right. Benjamin Gates watching on YouTube says, uh, did you enjoy any 4A beef this weekend, Rod? Did I? No. I had a lot of nachos, I'll tell you that, Friday and Saturday, and they were glorious. Had a lot of nachos. <laughs> Ooh, had a lot. Yeah, we had a lot of nachos. With some ground beef on them. Um, but listen, can I just say this? Friday, Saturday, Sunday night was the prime rib buffet here at Great Eagle Resort and Casino. We didn't partake one time. Not on the beef. Last night we partaked on just desserts. How about that? I'll get around to the beef, but it's not, not a... It's not foray. Not a cheap buffet. Like, not a cheap buffet. We went and she comes in. Can I help you? Already? We already had our dessert, you know, and she was going to bring us our waters. So I think she's like, oh, you're just in for a quick dessert, eh? No meal, no buffet, just dessert. Craig Warden watching on YouTube says, ha, as soon as Rod says crack and rule, Game Plus shuts down. Are we off the air on Game Plus now? Oh, it's your TV, Craig. Producer Clark says we're fine. <sighs> we're starting this week the way we usually end the weeks. All out of order. Not that. But the general here in Calgary writes in, he says, the Flames Blues tonight in the Dome. Rod, I'm sure you'll be there. I'll be there. You're going. You're going. We're all going. And maybe I will have some of that 4A beef tonight before the game that they tried to push on me. Yeah. My brother says it's a gimmick. Don't fall for it. 3A is the topest, top quality beef we've ever heard on our farm. But anyways... How about Justin Falk of the St. Louis Blues, who, quite frankly, I feel like that was a tempest in the teapot. Justin Falk of the St. Louis Blues said they are not, the Blues are not looking forward to coming to Canada to end up this roadie. They won in Vancouver last night 3-1. They're here in Calgary tonight. And to be honest with you, I feel like I get a lot of my news, Darren, from yahoo.ca. Don't, okay. at, don't at me. Yeah. But it's where I go to get my mail, right? So I got to log into yahoo.ca, and the first thing you see is whatever their news is. I feel like they were really trying to kick up some dirt and some controversy on Justin Falk's comments about the Blues not wanting to come to Canada. And it's like, nobody cared. It's like, yeah, we in Canada don't want to be in Canada, so how can we blame Justin Falk? That's the sense that I got. There was no outroar over that. Right. Or, by, or backlash. No. And part of it, too, is you're bringing your team through to play in front of no crowd, too. Yeah, well, I, nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody blames him. You know? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's any reason to blame him for the comments or to be upset that he doesn't want to come through right now. It's a tough place to come and, you know, play. You're not going to have any fans. You're going to have no atmosphere. There's more restrictions. Um, just not a lot of fun. I get it. The other night at the Flames game, there was, I, I tried to find the attendance number, and I couldn't. 
My go-to is the score app. <laughs> if it's not on there, it doesn't exist. I assume it would be 50%. So 9,000? Does that, that right? wasn't there. But it was so... No. I don't think. It was so quiet in the Saddle Dome. I'm like, this is what it must have been like in the NHL bubble. It was very much like that in the WHL bubble, which we broadcast the games. Yes. Um... Uh, I got so much to get to. Can I just speak for a second about Clark Gillies and then I'll get to the NFL Conference Championships because everybody's going goo goo gaga over that. Clark Gillies passed away on Friday night. New York Islanders great, Regina Pat's legend, the guy that doesn't need any introduction to you people, our viewers. And if you go read my Monday morning goalie column, it's up right now at rodpeterson.com. It's the top thing running. I have a point in there on Clark. And I'll just tell you what I wrote there. First time I ever laid eyes on Clark Gillies in person was the 25-year reunion of the Memorial Cup 1974 Regina Pats team. We were at the Flowing Springs Golf Club, northwest of Regina. We're all in the parking lot, putting on our golf shoes, getting ready to go. This suburban rolls in. Clark Gillies gets out. (sighs) Pressed red golf shirt, black slacks. Shiny black leather loafers. How do you think? Just looking like a million bucks. Hair was still black, right? Grease back. Nobody needed to tell anybody that this is Clark Gillis. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody knew this was Clark. And if they didn't, they knew he Get was out. important. If you didn't know, yeah, beat it. This is a Pat's golf tournament, for God's sakes. But the, even in everybody just watched Clark as he walked into the clubhouse. Before long, it's psh, giving somebody a noogie, pushing somebody, you know, wrestling. That's Clark. Just fun, laughing uproariously, and then that touched off a whole weekend of fun and frivolity. He's just one of the guys. But God did not create us all equal. Sorry to tell you. Clark Gillies is a Hall of Famer in every sense of the word. I've done so many events with him, with Pat's alumni, and he always said that Memorial Cup championship meant so much to him. Not to say it's more than a Stanley Cup or his four Stanley Cups, but he's like, in my circles, Rod, a lot of guys got Stanley Cups. Not that many have Memorial Cups. Clark would always say that. And then Joe Lozito was at the game Saturday night at Long Island, sent me some photos from the Leafs and Islanders game. He said there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Flowers all over the Clark Gillies tribute in the Hall of Fame for the Islanders there. That one hit us all hard over the weekend. So condolences to the Gillies family, the Trumbly family. And uh, that was tough. Man, he's just, he's just cool. So cool. And I only really got to know him through the show, right? I mean, a little bit around the Pats in the later years, but no, around the show. And just so cool. He always lit up the screen when he came on with you and with, his, with us, right? He always lit guy. the place up, you know, so much that he paid attention and he made you feel like you were the most important person in his life. He always did. You know, like to come on the show and be like, Rod, I don't see a Clark Gillies bobblehead on your desk. And then making yeah. sure that he ships one and it's there in two days. You know, like it's that kind of stuff. You always left feeling the conversation feeling pretty good. A lot of people in Winnipeg checking in today. Uh, David Ice says, Gillies was a very amazing player. He was a force that if he drove to the net, it was a goal always or a fight. You're not old enough. This guy was born in 1987. You probably don't understand, but you've noticed why there's so many Islanders fans in Saskatchewan. It's because half of them were from Saskatchewan. Brian Trache, Val Marie, Bob Bourne, Netherhill, Clark Gillies, Moose Jaw. There'd be more if I took time to think about it. That's why. Uh, Love Face is back. The online entertainer. <laughs> what a segue. I know, right? Um, but I have a Stanley Cup in my office. It's a mini Stanley Cup from a Kinsman dinner in Saskatoon. Yep. And it's got those names on it. It's got Clark Gilley's name inscribed on it with Trache and Bob Bourne. And, you know, for the four oh. Stanley Cups, it's got all the four years. And uh, so he'll always have a place around our, our show and our Of course. Spot. I apologize. We're past time. I knew this was going to happen. I'll see you back for hour two. Sounds good. Our NFL insider Jeff Reinbold joins us next. We'll be talking more football, of course, when we return. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network, live from Gray Eagle Resort and Casino here in Calgary. We're also live on YouTube at 24 Hour Sports Radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed.
addiction. It destroys relationships, families, and lives. It makes individuals and the people who love them feel powerless. But the good news is that addiction is a treatable illness. At Aurora Recovery Center, we provide everything you need to build a solid foundation for your recovery with holistic evidence-based treatment tailored to each individual. Located in Gimli, Manitoba on the shores of Lake Winnipeg, Aurora can help regardless of whether or not you feel ready or have tried before. Aurora Recovery Center, recovery for life. Visit auroracoverycenter.com for more information today. You might not be injured if you slip and fall, or you might hit your head. That could cause a traumatic brain injury that, depending on how severe it is, could take months to heal or leave you with long-term effects. Effects like getting debilitating headaches for the rest of your life. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lifetime impact. Take safer steps with WorksafeSask.ca. A new year means a new you. Pick up a new ride to match at Capital Ford for 2022. Custom order the perfect vehicle for you or check out our in-stock F-150s on the lot right now. Get into a pre-owned vehicle that's already on the lot and ready to roll. We need your used vehicle too. We pay big and you don't even have to buy from us. Plus, our service department is always here to help. Get special pricing on name brand tires, tire storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. Start the new year right at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes to our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Beautiful Banff, Alberta. RP Show coming to you live from Gray Eagle Resort and Casino, Calgary's entertainment destination. And we're very excited to uh, welcome in our NFL insider, our good friend Jeff Reinbold, Alouette's special teams coordinator, Sky Sports NFL analyst, and uh, Coach Reinbold, if you don't mind, happy Monday. I'm going to jump right into it. Can we go to the, the question, NFL OT rules? Should they be changed following Sunday night's outcome? Whoops, a daisies. Okay, you guys let me know when we have him back, okay? <sighs> the poll, by the way, is that for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center. Let me check the uh, latest as we work on getting Coach Reinbold back. A lot of reaction to this one. Should the NFL change its OT rules? 83% of you on Twitter saying yes, they should. And you all watched it last night, the Kansas City Chiefs. Won the coin toss, drove the field. Travis Kelsey touchdown, game over. Okay, coach, I don't know if you caught what I said. The NFL uh, overtime rules, it's not new, but people are clamoring today for a change. Do we have Coach Reinbold? And he dropped again. All right, listen, guys, I'm going to read a sports update, and then we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back and do this for real, okay? 
Sports update, Montreal's Felix Auger Alassim is through to the men's quarterfinals at the Australian Open. The men's ninth seed moved on with a four-set win over Marin Cilic and will face U.S. Open champion Daniil Medvedev. Next, fellow Canadian Denis Shapovalov is in quarterfinal action later today when he faces Spanish legend Rafael Nadal. Meanwhile, Alizé Cornet survived a second-set meltdown to advance to the Women's Australian Open semifinals with a three-set win over Simona Halep. It'll be Cornet's first Grand Slam quarterfinal after 63 main draw appearances. The Calgary Flames are home to the St. Louis Blues in one of seven games on tonight's NHL schedule. Calgary struggled lately with a 3-6-1 and one record over the last 10. The Blues have won three in a row and eight of their last 10, including a 3-1 victory at Vancouver last night. The Montreal Canadiens are in St. Paul, Minnesota. Tonight, the struggling Habs have set a modest improvement lately with a win and two overtime losses over their last three games. A mogul superstar, Mikhail Kingsbury, will lead Canada's freestyle ski team at the Beijing Olympics. The 24-athlete team announced today also includes Rachel Carker, who is making her Olympic debut after an outstanding World Cup season. Canada has captured 25 medals in Olympic freestyle skiing more than any other country. The sports update for Ballers Rec Room. Check out our brand new line of games. Also for the Tap Brew House and Drive Through Liquor Store and for Red Bull Canada. Red Bull gives you wings. We're going to take a break. We have to. We're going to take a break and come back with Coach Reinbold with all the NFL analysis from Divisional Playoff Weekend. You are watching the RP Show live from Gray Eagle Resort and Casino on Game Plus Television, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. A legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Grey Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. Rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. 
Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. It's a Monday, brand new week in the RP show, and uh, <laughs> a lot of you are going to love this next segment, and a lot of you may hate it. But connection issues are befelling our appearance with our NFL analyst, Jeff Reinbold, this morning. So from now up until the top of the hour, it's going to be just me and you. Me and you. It's an early Taco Time viewer takeover. Thank God I love Mexi fries, as you can see here on the screen. Um, bumper sticker sent to me by our friends at Taco Time. Who knew Calgary was the mecca of Taco Time? We do now. Online ordering, by the way, is available now at Taco Time. Try it today and get a free burrito on your first order. Use promo code FREEBURRITO when you sign up. So, yeah, we're going to get to the viewer comments. And right up until the top of the hour, I don't know that we're going to get a Jeff Reinbold at all. The poll question today we just talked about. And I know that's what everybody wanted to talk about all day. I wanted to get Jeff Reinbold's take on it for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center, Capital Automall with dealerships across the Canadian prairies. Should the NFL change its OT rules? Over 80% of you saying yes, they should. But the people that back the NFL's OT rule say, you know, they told me years ago, Rod, you can play defense too. Stop them, keep them out of the end zone. Then you have a chance to win the game. That's why it hasn't changed. Initially, when they went to this format, it was just a field goal. They didn't, they didn't deem that wasn't fair. So they've made it a touchdown, and now, and listen, I get it. Greatest game of the year goes to overtime and really gets decided by a coin toss in a lot of ways. Doesn't seem right, does it? But they haven't changed it since, and why would they now? Mandy and Edmonton writes in and says, Rod, apparently Chris Jones of the Elks reached out to Deron Carter. What's your take on that? Uh, well, for that, I would direct you to my Monday morning Goldie column right now at rodpeterson.com because I address it there. But, yeah. But I'll, this is my take. Deron will be 31 in March. He felt he was blackballed from the CFL. He's got a lot of football left in him. Deron still got the skills. He's never been hurt in his, in his entire career. He told me he wants to play till he's 40 years old. And even if they want him to play defense in Edmonton, which is the rumor, Deron just wants to be on the field like most ballers. So I'm, I fully applaud it. I applaud Chris Jones getting the band back together at Commonwealth Stadium. Okay, producer Clark says he feels confident with our connection with Jeff Reinbold. So, Coach... Let's go. And if you don't mind, we'll jump right into the deep end, Coach. Um, the NFL OT rule, thumbs up or down? Should it be changed after well, last I, night? I think after last night, you know, there's going to be a discussion when the, when the competition committee meets in this offseason. You know, John Harbaugh has been a proponent of a thing they call uh, spot and choose, which we used in the, uh, in the spring league as the overtime format. And if you think what we got now is hard, spot and choose is, I mean, you gotta have a PhD to figure it out. So I, I, I don't know, you know, I think the reality of it is this, this happened to the Chiefs a couple of years ago when the Patriots, you know, took the ball and scored and, and Patrick Mahomes never had a chance after going up and down the field the whole game. The reality of it is that I don't know if there's any fair way other than just playing an extra quarter and they don't like that because of, you know, the concerns with player injuries and, you know, the amount of time they're on the field and all of that. But it's the playoffs. And I think we need a better system than we have right now. Who has the best OT rules as far as you're concerned? Well, I, I think the ours in the CFL are, are as, about as good as you're going to get. In college football, you know, 
the way it is, you know, sometimes you see those scores, Rod, they get up in the 60s because nobody can stop anybody the way, you know, the way the format that they use. So in, you know, in our situation where each team does have a chance to possess the ball and each team, you know, if you kick a field goal, now you know you've got to go down and, and score a touchdown. And so I think it's fair because you do have an opportunity to go on the field and, you know, match whatever the, your opponent did. It's funny because early 2000s, I'm with the Riders. Henry Burris is our quarterback. Dave Dickinson's with the Stamps. We're going to overtime, and they're throwing like six touchdowns in a game and 600 yards, and those yardage were going to their stats. The next year, they didn't include it in their stat totals because it was so wild, but, man, was it fun to watch. Um, how did your picks work out, Coach? You know what? I, I was actually pretty good. I thought the Rams would go into Tampa and beat Tampa because Tampa was just so beat up. You know, they really – Mike Evans was the only legitimate wide receiver they had in the game. Scotty Miller flashed a little bit, but Scotty Miller's, you know, a wide receiver three at, you know, at best. And, you know, Gronk is lumbers around. He'll make some catches, but the pass rush from the Rams was just too good. Worst didn't play. And, you know, the, the young kid they had in there just got chewed up. You know, Aaron Donald is a man, and I mean a grown man. And, you know, we see Vaughn Miller really – put his stamp on the game too. You know, Sneed, the the uh, GM at with the Rams has done a great job of going all in. They pushed all their chips in the middle of the table, went out and got Matthew Stafford, got OBJ, got Vaughn Miller, you know, and, and they've got a, you know, they got stars on every side of the ball and, and still Tampa made it tough on them. But I was happy for Matt Stafford because after all those years of being in Detroit and, you know, having no playoff wins, he's got, He's got more playoff wins in the last week than the Detroit Lions have had in 25 years. Proves what kind of player he is, but can, can we safely say the Bucs only played 30 minutes? That's the sense that I got out of that game. Yeah, you know what, they, they really started out, uh, just really didn't play very well at all in the first half. And defensively was where I thought they didn't, they just didn't play with a lot. Of, and then, you know, today I listened to BA's press conference and he talked about on the last play where they went zero coverage, you know, they, it was max blitz, max pressure, and they're all, mm -hmm. you know, with nobody in the middle of the field. And, you know, not everybody blitzed. And that's an indication of a team that's not mentally, you know, ready to play. And, and you know, you got to feel for Todd Bowles because he dials up zero pressure and they don't, you know, they don't run it. And now, you know, Winfield's out there one-on-one -on -one with the triple crown receiver. That's not a good matchup with no, with no pressure help. Oh, I could talk about that game forever, but I should move on. The Bengals. The Bengals. Who saw this coming? Well, you know what, Rod? It, it, here's the thing with the Bengals. The Bengals are playing with all house, house money now, right? They're playing <laughs> loose and free. And, you know, Joe, Joe Burrow is a unique, unique talent. You know, his dad, Jimmy, played in the CFL and coached in the CFL. And, you know, a kid's been around football for a long, long time. He's much like Mahomes. When you grow up in a family that's, uh, you know, got a high-level competitor, and in that, you know, in the competitive, he, these kids aren't, in, they're not intimidated. It's not too big for them because they've watched their dad play. They've, they've been around it, their dad coaching at a high level. And so he just goes out there and, you know, he's the new Joe Cool. If Joe Montana was Joe Cool, well, this is Joe Cool too because he doesn't get flapped they hit him right they sacked him nine times and hit him 13 <laughs> times you know and and those were not light bodies that were falling on and he's coming off of an acl but he just just stayed in there and kept you know kept throwing the ball and then their defense made plays Tannehill turned it over three times and you know playoff football is really really difficult to you know turn it over that many times and win a football game ironically it's not the first time a quarterback's been sacked nine times and they've won an nfl playoff game i think it's like the third but it's highly highly rare they tell me 90 seconds left for packers 49ers what's your breakdown of that game well i just really felt like the 49ers you know their defense was outstanding their pass rush bosa is special you know they rushed four and they were you know they're great problems for Aaron Rodgers. But, you know, look at the Packers. The Packers are the same way. When they lost Robert Tanya, and, you know, Cobb was a non-factor. He'd been hurt for, I don't know, for a month. 
He was a non-factor. So all the Niners did was they just doubled Devontae Adams and Lazard and, and uh, Valdez Scanling. They're just not good enough to beat you. You know, you look at the good teams, Rod, and I think this is in every professional league. You better have a quarterback, number one, but you better have weapons around that quarterback. And you look at the teams that are all playing now, Kansas City, multiple weapons. Cincinnati, multiple weapons. Rams, multiple weapons. So, you know, again, I think it's going to be a great, great weekend of football coming up and, a, and a, you know, a really, really good Super Bowl. The National Football League could not have had a better weekend than they had last weekend. Three games spent was perfect. walk-off kicks and, and an overtime classic. Perfect. Coach, we'll talk about it next week. Thanks for this. All right, guys. Take care. Hour two coming up after this break. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. You might not be injured if you slip and fall. Or you might sprain your wrist or even fracture it. A severe wrist fracture can take at least two months to heal properly. And it can cause you to develop arthritis that keeps you from doing something as simple as picking up your child without pain. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lifetime impact. Take safer steps with WorkSafeSask.ca. this look familiar your fans deserve an incredible arena experience it's time for an upgrade stunning graphics revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology let us help you find the best solution for your facility bdg always delivering the best fan experience Addiction. It destroys relationships, families, and lives. It makes individuals and the people who love them feel powerless. But the good news is that addiction is a treatable illness. At Aurora Recovery Center, we provide everything you need to build a solid foundation for your recovery with holistic, evidence-based treatment tailored to each individual. Located in Gimli, Manitoba, on the shores of Lake Winnipeg, Aurora can help regardless of whether or not you feel ready or have tried before. Aurora Recovery Center. Recovery for life. Visit auroracoverycenter.com for more information today. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Hey, Rod Squad. Now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we were on the show. Official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. No! How did this fly get in there? Somebody got a fly swatter? Yeehaw! Uh, the it was a shot of Prairie Jesus is really what it was. It was. You'd think we, we'd be getting used to it, but it would, we, we'd never get used to it. We'd never get tired of good things happening. This life doesn't get old. No! 
it was a nice little distraction from the real world, and here we are today for a coffee session. This is the Rod Peterson Show. It sure is. Life is fantastic. A big reason for that is uh, Great Eagle Resort and Casino and uh, the wonderful people of Alberta, which have welcomed us with open arms over the past couple of weeks. And we continue to broadcast live here from Great Eagle Resort and Casino. You're going to be hearing a lot about them coming up here in hour two. The Moose has rejoined us here on the set. We're in the lobby, by the way, of the event center where on Saturday night, Pete Paquette and Paquette Productions rock the house with the Elvis Presley tribute here, and it was just fantastic, and we're going to tell you about some upcoming shows. How you doing, Moose? I'm doing great. We were just talking about the Pete Paquette uh, uh, concert back there with Corey and with Pete and everybody, and they said, you know, it was really cool how he reminded everybody, look it, I'm Pete. I'm not Elvis, right? And he had some fun with it, and he kind of yeah. laughed at himself. Uh, it was a really entertaining show. Yeah, it was fun, and I said to Sheldon, uh, the director of entertainment here, I said, do you mind if I go up to the front of the stage to get some photos? He's like, you'd better. <laughs> so I did, and go check my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's all over it. And they're all still, they're all talking about, did Rod work out with Elvis? The yeah, next day? Yes. yes, worked out with Elvis. I'm more cardio, he's more <sighs> weight training. Between the two, we covered it. Hey, by the way, viewers, and particularly those in Saskatchewan, we're excited to officially announce that the Telemiracle 46 online 50-50 is back. The winner will be announced on Countdown to Telemiracle, which will be live streamed at telemiracle.com on March 5th, just before the start of the Telemiracle 46 broadcast on CTV. Raffle proceeds will stay in Saskatchewan and will be part of Telemiracle 46, supporting the work of the Kinsman Foundation. You can go to telemiracle.com right now to buy tickets. So uh, thank you for all the support last year. I think it was $726,000 was raised just between the 50-50 alone. Um, we're going to be talking a lot of football today. Uh, we're going to the Flames and the Blues tonight, so I have a sense that we'll talk a lot of hockey tomorrow. We're coming out of a very exciting hockey weekend. But it's funny because they're saying this was the best football weekend ever in the National Football League. And I probably, Moose, would tend to go along with that. I would. Every regulation time went down to a kick. Every, every one. Right every of the four games. Yeah. But I just remember Ray Elgard, the Ryder Hall of Famer and CFL Hall of Famer. Watch your toes. I'm going to drop some names here. Ray Elgard saying to me one time, you know, because he lives in Las Vegas, he's like, down here in America, everything's the best ever, the greatest, the biggest, until next weekend. And then it's, do you know what I mean? Yes. But I get it. Four games all going down to a kick on the last play. And uh, the only one that didn't was the Chiefs-Bills game Sunday night that went to overtime. But we have breaking news from the Canadian Football League that I want to pass along. The Edmonton Elks have hired Victor Kui as the team's president. Kui made it official by announcing his acceptance of the role with Edmonton Sun reporter Terry Jones. He was born in Edmonton, attended the University of Alberta, and earned a Johnny Bright scholarship from the Green and Gold. He played a key role in building one championship, a multi-billion dollar mixed martial arts business based in Singapore. Um, he is of Filipino descent, but born and raised in Edmonton. That's his family's Filipinos. And uh, so, yeah, it was a short list of some tremendously talented guys, uh, which included Sean Fleming, Edmonton Eskimos great, a great cup champion punter, kicker with the Edmonton Eskimos, but they went with Victor Kui. So they're excited about that at Edmonton. And well, they sounds like a great hire. And then they're also in the news with Chris Jones apparently reaching out to Deron Carter uh, late last about week that? about returning to, the, yeah, returning to the CFL as a defensive player. But as the viewers know and the American viewers that don't know who Deron is, I'm sure you do, though. His father's Chris Carter, the Pro Football Hall of Famer. <laughs> Deron's a really good friend of mine, and he can play every single position on the field. He can. I've seen it with my own eyes. And I said to Deron one time, how do you know every position? Because he's like, Rod, I'm a better quarterback than anything. I'm a better quarterback. So he goes, because I coached every position at my dad's clinic in Fort Lauderdale and all over South Florida, all through his teen years, 
and then into his 20s, and he's only 30 now. So Duran can play any position on the field. And quite frankly, if I'm a, if I'm a CFL team, I'm signing him. CFL needs personality. They need talent. They need a guy like Deron Carter. Darren, let's be honest. Any team. That's my take. So what's yours? I need to see him on the field. It's been a while, right? Yeah. It's not Colin Kaepernick situation, but it's almost the same. You know, um, Colin Kaepernick, we know he's a talented person, a talented player. I mean, he can play. Can he still play? That's the question for me with Colin Kaepernick, right? We talk about he's been gone for a while. Well, Duran, we know he's got loads of athletic ability, loads of character. He'd be wonderful for the league. Um, can he still play? I'm all for bringing him back in. Let's, let's see. I'd love it. Oh. And you know if he can still catch the football that he's going to have a look on offense or defense or wherever he's, uh, they need him. So uh, it would be entertaining. Mandy in Edmonton writes in and says, but what was the real reason Chris Jones cut him from Saskatchewan? Does it really matter now? It's in the past. If Chris Jones wants to bring him to Edmonton, it couldn't have been that serious, right? It's in the past. Right. What does it matter? What does it matter, Mandy? Just happy you got a new president. Looks like a good one. And Deron Carter headed your way, which if I'm not mistaken, you and Deron... Had a bit of a Twitter spat in the past, right? We really need, as a society, to move on and stop hanging on to things. That would be, that would be a real nice start, wouldn't it? Yeah. And I'll just leave that there. Darren in Salt Lake City says, uh, it's an interesting point. Isn't it feasible to have one playoff for the regular season and one for the playoffs? Because our poll question today pertains to the way the Chiefs-Bills game ended last night. It went to overtime, courtesy a last-second field goal made by the Chiefs. It goes to overtime. Chiefs win the, field, uh, win the coin toss. Go downfield, and Patrick Mahomes hits Travis Kelsey for the game-winning touchdown. And the Bills don't even get a chance to touch the ball. Look, I don't like it either. But it was explained to me by the football guys, because I'm still a hockey guy to the bone, that you got to play defense too, Rod. It's a team game. And I'm like, okay. Even they agreed scoring a field goal first wasn't right. But a touchdown, they feel, is fine. But it's not just Bills fans today, Darren, that are upset. It seems to be a lot of football fans. People that didn't even have skin in the game or right. to have, were not right. Poll question for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center is, should the NFL, or 80% of you, 83% of you people, saying that, yes, they should change their rules. What are you, you're saying you think that they should and they will. Uh, yeah, but I'm also cautioning everybody because last night we, we didn't like the overtime rules. I didn't either because I wanted to see the shot for shot, right? I'm a, you know, I'm a tennis fan and you can't lose in tennis until the other guy or the other girl breaks your serve, a.k.a. plays better defense and comes up with a stop. So we don't have that in football. But last night's game was so entertaining, especially inside the final two and a half minutes when it was touchdown, touchdown, field goal, touchdown, touchdown, zing, zing, zing. Most games, most games are not like that, right? It's hard to score touchdowns in the National Football League. So because we were in a shootout, we wanted to see it continue. But most games aren't a shootout, right? So if you score that touchdown, you've earned it, and you've earned the win. So I, I get it. It's just we had an outlier last night. John Burns here in Calgary is watching on YouTube. He's dropped $10 in the super chat to get his comment read. And I'm sorry, I missed it. We have a slightly different comment set up here. Um, but, but we got you, John. And he says, NFL OT rules. Touchdowns should always be considered legitimate. The Rams beat Tampa late because Tampa's defense failed to do their job. If that happens in overtime, suddenly it's not a touchdown. I get what he's saying there, um, but as the view, this is what's great about this coffee get together that we do every day from noon to two Eastern on Game Plus Television is the debate. And the NHL has three on three overtime in the regular season, but five on five in the playoffs. Right. So they change it. They change absolutely. So there's there's a case to be made 
Regarding the passing of Clark Gillies, Craig Campbell watching from the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto. He says, tough news regarding the passing of Clark Gillies. He kindly donated his Memorial Cup ring to the Hockey Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah, I did a bit of a monologue to Clarky last hour. Uh, like I said, that one hit us all hard. People that didn't even know Clark, sad to see him go. Pancreatic cancer at the age of 67 last week. Gino DePauli, the voice of the Oilers, is watching, and he writes in on YouTube, and he says, will we see Peter Labardius live from the Gray Eagle this week? Yes. As a matter of fact, I believe it's Tuesday. One, one th- boy, we're covering a lot of ground today. This is, this is weird. It's not just a bunch of bunk today. Right. We're covering a lot of ground. Yeah, we are. This residency of ours is flying by almost too fast. And I almost wonder if we're going to get a more dealings with the Gray Eagle people than I am. Yeah. I think we thought by, or I thought mistakenly by this week, we might be in a position to have a live studio audience. Today, we just have a few people, but we could have an actual theater full. But shoot, by the time, this is going to be ready to go soon. Leave. Yeah. Calgary. I know. So where are we at with a live studio audience? Oh, it's 1111 a mountain? Oh, it was. Past it. Sorry, I'm talking too much. Um, is it going to be our next trip to Gray Eagle? Live studio audience? Or what's the word? No, we're going to open it up later this week. Come on! We're going to open it up later this week for people to come down. So, did you hear that? You're learning what I'm learning. The, you're finding out what I'm finding out. You and I will make a rock pile later. Okay. Put our heads together. Put our heads together. And uh, we'll, uh, tomorrow morning, you can add this to tomorrow morning's quick six show topics. Okay. We'll tell you about the, uh, where you guys can come and watch live studio audio. How about that? How about that? How about that? Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. Things have just really changed for the better. Uh, okay. Um, I haven't opened the text line till now. 902-518-3033. Pick up the phone and text RP. Rod Peterson. How does she say it? Rod Peterson. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dead plus television. She's in Toronto. She says, I agree with changing the OT rule in the NFL in the playoffs for sure. Like extra innings and shootouts, each team gets a chance. It doesn't seem fair that the Bills didn't scrimmage on offense. It doesn't seem fair, but... Now, as Jeff Reinbold has said, if you want fair or credit, don't go into football. Life isn't fair. You say it all the time. Life isn't fair. You don't want it to be fair, and fair doesn't mean the same. Okay, so let's just think about that for a second. Fair doesn't mean equal or the same. Brady... In the Bridge City, says the Bills managed the ending of that game extremely poorly. A squib kick would have brought the time to six seconds with one play to get within field goal distance. I, I've heard that argument. I'll say it again. Football, the ultimate hindsight game. They play any kind of defense. We're not talking about it today. Did you hear what Andy Reid said to Patrick Mahomes going into the 13 seconds? Uh, when the situation's grim, be the Grim Reaper. Yeah. Well, you roll your eyes like it didn't happen? Or? It worked. It did work. I don't like the Chiefs. I don't okay. care for Andy Reid. Okay. Uh, Brady goes on to say the CFL rules are done right. That's the thing. Everybody's been kibitzing for the last 10 days to two weeks about what's wrong with the CFL, and we can sit back and go, <laughs> nobody's ever bitching about CFL rules for the most part on a Monday. Right? Not like no. they do in the NFL. No, not at all. Phil is watching in Dauphin, Manitoba. Phil, he texts in. Good day, Rod. I'm not huge on the NFL, but my God, what a hell of a weekend. Great weekend overall with the UFC on Saturday, but the football games were the icing on the cake. Phil and Dauphin. Grant Scrimbit uh, watching in Kelowna. Says, Rod, I need to see a Saskatchewan mug because the one you have up there right now makes my stomach churn. Yeah, we'll turn it off then. Spicy. <laughs> right? Stampeders get me this. What do the riders got me? Nothing. And the coffee tastes delicious out of it. When in Calgary. If you don't like it, turn it off. Uh, Ron Thompson in Calgary. 
texting in, this has to go down as one of the best weekends for NFL playoffs in history. So much excitement. Statistically, I think it is. Four games go down to the last play. play. You couldn't ask for more. Yeah. Donald, our Navy friend, says the Bills kicking through the end zone gave KC too much time to go for the tie, which is what Brady was just saying. And I have to apologize, but I can't. My screen won't advance past. We got too many messages here. Yeah, they could have, on that, they, they could have squib kicked it. We thought about that. I went back and forth on Twitter. They said, well, if you run it out or if you let it go through the end zone, you know, if you kick it to the five-yard line, well, any situation where K- Kansas City can let that ball go through the end zone, they're going to take because in today's game, you have more dynamic playmakers on offense and throwing the football gives you more of a chance than trying to break something on a kick return. But if Buffalo would have squid kicked it and just let it stop in the middle of the field, Kansas City would have had to run off three or four seconds to just fall on that football. So um, that might have been better, but you're right. Ultimate hindsight sport. Yeah. Adam and Hamilton, the CFL rules may not get a lot of talk on Mondays, but the refs sure do. You get what he's saying. No talk about the refs from the weekend, hey? Not this weekend. No. And Tom had some things to say when his lip was bleeding and he was uh, upset he didn't get the roughing the passer call. But that's always the case. We're late for a break. We'll continue the discussion when we return. Mike Abumeshrick coming up. Western Mustang Hall of Famer. Grey Cup champion. 10-year CFLer. The general in Calgary has just dropped $7 on a super. Your mug rocks and your crew rocks, Rod. Keep it up. One thing I did learn here in Calgary is that they want us to go back to Facebook. So, I said, talk to the boss. I know. We'll be right back. You're watching on Game Plus Television, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is is gonna have significant impact on, on, you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. You might not be injured if you slip and fall, or you might hit your head. That could cause a traumatic brain injury that, depending on how severe it is, could take months to heal. 
or leave you with long-term effects. Effects like getting debilitating headaches for the rest of your life. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lifetime impact. Take safer steps with WorkSafeSask.ca. A new year means a new you. Pick up a new ride to match at Capital GMC for 2022. Custom order the perfect vehicle for you or reserve a unit that's already on its way. Get into a GM certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to roll. We need your used vehicle too. We pay big and you don't even have to buy from us. Plus, our service department is always here to help. Get special pricing on name brand tires, tire storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. Start the new year right at Capital GMC in Regina. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Beautiful day out here in the foothills. Shot of lovely Banff, Alberta, right there. We are live from the Gray Eagle Resort and Casino in Calgary. Get ready to catch the Icelandic worldwide phenomenon, Kaleo, with over one billion streams worldwide and countless sold-out shows spanning from Moscow to London. Kaleo is finally bringing their electrifying fighter flight tour to Calgary, May 5th at the Gray Eagle Event Center. Find your tickets at Ticketmaster.ca. We're covering all kinds of territory here today on the RP Show. Thanks for joining us. Um, I don't know. The, the viewers, by the way, are getting a little out of order today. They're trying to uh, decide <laughs> who the leader is of the uh, Taco Time comment of the week. And Moose, I'm not sure. Do you have the comments up? Are you watching them like I'm watching them? No, I'm not. Okay. I'm not. Mandy seems very concerned, Mandy in Edmonton, with the Elks potentially signing Deron Carter. And she says, what was it, Mandy? Something along the lines of the best predictor of the future is by past behavior. And she's right. I can't argue that. That's the truth. But I'm also living proof that I'm living proof that people can change myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if Deron Carter needs to change. It's been kind of interesting to sit back and watch the reaction to this Deron Carter story because some people have written and said, well, if Deron Carter's mental health is fine, why wouldn't he be welcome back? I'm like, when, when did anybody ever talk about Deron Carter's mental health? When was that a thing? Right. You know what I mean? Like, when, when did that come up? What's he been diagnosed as? Where did you see that? Can you pre provide me the link to that story? Yeah. So people go on and on and on about what they know and what they don't know. That's social media. You yeah. don't need to pass an IQ test to have a baby or... Get a Twitter account. That's just the way that it is. And by the way, I want to mention something else tonight. This is going to be fun. I've decided, Moose, that because you were humming and hawing on the Flames game, right? But right. you're in? You're right. in? I think so, yeah. So I'm thinking when we go down to the Stampede grounds, yeah. I think I'm going to go up to that guy that was trying to push the 4A beef on me. See, oh, you got to have some uh, Alberta beef. You got to have some of this. I'm like, oh, is it 3A? It's 4A. It's the newest. It's the greatest. It's the latest and greatest. I'm like, come on. <laughs> I can smell the lie like a fart in a car. Something I'm going to go down and have some fun with that guy. Oh, yeah. You should. My family tells me there's no such thing as 4A beef, that 3A is the best. Because the thing was, that was the night the Panthers were here. And he's like, you guys from Florida? And I'm like, as far as you know, yes. And then he really thought he had a sucker on the line. And what he doesn't know is Florida is the number two state for beef production in the United States of America. And that's why I was telling you on the weekend when we were driving right. back from Banff, I said, yeah. I would not trade my upbringing in the cattle industry for anything. Don't want to go back and work in it now. But those lessons that I learned as a kid, I didn't just learn them. I absorbed them. Then you're not going to pull one over on me. You got to go back to him and say, look at. I don't know if you know this, but I grew up on a cattle farm. And you must not know what you're talking about. Because we grow 5A beef. <laughs> <laughs> right? We grow 5A beef. You must be <laughs> falling behind in God. How about that? Yeah, exactly. You do that. That's what you'll say. That'll be awesome. 
And my phone all weekend has been blowing up from Alberta people that are just loving this for a beef situation. <laughs> so, I mean, we need to continue <laughs> the story. What do you got? Eight minute abs. <laughs> I can, you can do it in six minutes. Try seven minute abs. <laughs> uh, we're making a lot of money on YouTube comments, by the way, today. Super chat. Let's keep it rolling, baby. John, yeah, we are the only fans of sports talk. John in Calgary, John Burns says, is 4A beef like 6G Wi-Fi? Is it? Doesn't exist. No, it doesn't <laughs> exist, exactly. Um, I don't know. 5G is all I've heard of so far. David in Winnipeg. David Ice writes in. He says, 8 USA Beef quality grades, prime, choice, select, standard, commercial, cutter, and canner. Yes, but we're in Canada. So we go single A, double A, triple A. And as my brother said to me, never heard of 4A. Uh, 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 uh. I heard of 4H. That was the... Or uh, head, heart, health, and hands. Right. Were you, very I good. was in 4H. Yeah, does that surprise too. you? No, Were it you? does not. Of course. Both grain and cattle. Oh, wow. Beef. Yeah. Mandy seems very disturbed about the Duran Carter to Edmonton situation. And she says she really wants to get to the bottom of this. And the thing is, some things you're just not going to get to the bottom of, okay? Because I don't, I don't think that it was, as a matter of fact, I know it was never reported why Duran was released by the, I don't think so. You'd have to go back and Google. I mean, yeah, I know the story. I was, the, was with the team at the time, I think. Yeah, I was. Mandy says, I just find this intriguing with Chris Jones reaching out. Is he fixing wrongs of the past? So many things to think about here. And, well, for you, but let me just assure you, there's nothing, there's nothing between Chris Jones and Deron Carter. They're fine. They're fine. They will both tell you that, and I both, I believe that. Mm -hmm. But... Go take your little man for a walk around the block. It's not that big a deal. I don't think it's something that you need to lose sleep over if you're, if you're Mandy. No, I don't either. You really don't. Um, Moose, well, let me do a sports update first. Breaking news from the CFL that Calgary Stampeders have re-signed Canadian offensive lineman Zach Williams. He is the fifth veteran offensive lineman to sign with the Stamps this offseason, joining a group that includes holdovers Julian Good-Jones, Sean McEwen, Ryan Sevier, as well as Derek Dennis. How about now, that? Now, this is why you got to pay attention. you got to pay attention for fake news. I'm going to call out Canadian press here. This story says Derek Den Dennis suited up for the Edmonton Elks last year. No, he didn't. Hot take. Just because he was on the roster. Just about every radio station and newspaper across Canada will get this story and print it, or they'll put it on the air, or ones that aren't too cheap to pay for Canadian press, because there are some of those that don't have it, right? Because they're too cheap. His Wikipedia says he was with the Edmonton Elks. Didn't play. Right. That's why you need to keep it here for the goods. Monday to Friday, noon to 2 Eastern. Four teams remain in the NFL playoffs. The Cincinnati Bengals play the Chiefs for the AFC crown next Sunday at Arrowhead. Kansas City is hosting that game for the fourth straight year as it seeks a third consecutive Super Bowl berth. By the way, bet regal uh, odds, Moose. What do you think the line is? The opening line. Chiefs home to the Bengals. Chiefs by four and a half. Seven. Oh, wow. Seven from right. bet regal. Yeah. And then it's an all-NFC West Conference championship game with the L.A. Rams taking on the San Francisco 49ers Sunday evening. I'm actually proud that earlier on this season, one of the viewers asked, Rod, what's the toughest division in all of the NFL? I said the NFC West. And the two teams left standing in the entire conference come from that division. Mm -hmm. And what do you think the line is on that one? Rams and 49ers. Probably four and a half for the 49ers, or for the Rams, sorry. 3.5 for the Rams. Okay. It's 3.5. That's, That's the opening line. For betregal.ca, you can still get 22 welcome dollars from our friends at betregal.ca with the promo code RP22. A lot of folks took advantage of it on the weekend. Unfortunately, a lot of folks lost their money. It happens. But if you haven't signed up yet, you can now. Betregal.ca, use the promo code RP22 and get 22 free 
betting dollars. A bogey-free final round was not enough for Canada's Brooke Henderson in the LPGA Tour season opening tournament. Henderson of Smith Falls, Ontario, shot 70 and finished second behind Danielle Kang of the U.S. at the Hilton Grand Vacations Tournament of Champions in Florida. It was the best finish for the Canadian across her four Tournament of Champions appearances. I was thinking about when she won the CP Women's Open, Wascana Golf and Country Club, or as Brooke said, the Wascana. I was there. I was on the, the 18th Wascana. hole. Remember her saying that? Yeah, I do. It's just so great to win the CP Women's Open here at the Wascana. Were you, uh, you were doing shows with me from the golf tournament. At the course. beginning, and then I had to leave town. So I didn't get to be there for the whole tournament. Wasn't but, it fun? Oh, it was so great. Which, you know, we talked to the Grey Eagle people, Sheldon, about coming back here for that golf tournament in the summer. Right. And I can't wait to broadcast from the golf course. I just love the atmosphere. It's awesome. Breaking news. Edmonton Elks president Victor Kui will be on the RP show on Friday. How about that? Thank you, Clark, for the, not for the notification. Great. How about that? Uh, continuing on with this sports update that's taken forever. The struggling Montreal Canadiens continue their 10-game road trip tonight in the NHL. Montreal is in Minnesota. The Canadiens have won just once in their last nine. Later, the Calgary Flames look to bounce back from Saturday's loss to the Edmonton Oilers. They host the surging St. Louis Blues at Scotiabank Saddle Dome. Every time I see Scotiabank Saddle Dome, I think of Peter Marr. And the way he said it, hey, the legendary voice of the Calgary Flames. Driving around this town, I hear the voice of Peter Marr. Yes. It's ringing in my ears all the time. And then he does the odd the commercial read. Right. And it's so great to hear his voice. So iconic. I love it. Hi, this is Peter Marr. I get my cars at Capital GMC Calgary. Takes, it's so great. I used to op his games when I first got into this business. I would listen to him all night sitting at the switchboard in Rosetown, Saskatchewan. That voice, it's awesome. Peter Marr, 66 CFR, Calgary Flames Radio. That's it? That's, <laughs> that's it? Gosh, that takes me back. Well, those old-timers that are watching now in Southern Alberta on Game Plus Television will, will know these names. I mean, somebody said to me here recently, was there ever a country station on AM in Calgary? Yes, 960 CFAC, Jimmy Hughes. It was the morning man. What were we driving by in the pregame show? You were, um, you did the read for the, uh, oh, what was the a hotel or a um, place? And you're like, it's, it started with a T. And you're like, Tom's House of Pizza. Pregame show. This is the Tom's House of Pizza pregame show. Calgary Stampeders football on AM 770 CHQR, Calgary. So great hearing that. I mean, and then Peter Marr would talk to you. Well, like that me. was Mark Stephen. Right. But Peter Marr would talk to me, the op. Not like, not to Darren DuPont, but he'd say, and for the updates, this is break 13, Calgary Flames Radio. Oh. The voice of the Flames. We did a little tour the other night, Moose and I, okay? We were driving around McLeod Trail South, and you Calgarians would know what I'm talking about. Showed me all the I spots. Right. <laughs> Ranchman's used to be here. Longhorn Trio Grand used to be here. The Rock and Horse Saloon, where I worked, nicknamed the Divorce Horse, used to be here. You're like, just down there and <sighs> hidden behind this and... I'm like, oh, the things that happened <laughs> behind that, the building. Down that alley. Woo! <clears throat> Starting to get shivers. Uh, yeah, what a town. Missed living here. Tom's House of Pizza. Tom's House of Pizza pregame show. This sports update for dubnetwork.ca. While we're talking about it, the WHL's number one source of breaking news and information. Visit today, dubnetwork.ca, and for Ben Cahoon's G2G protein bars. Order yours now at g2gbars.ca. Moose, I'll see you back for overtime, okay? You betcha. Uh, Mike Abu Meshrick joins us next to talk a little ball. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network, live from Gray Eagle Resort and Casino on Game Plus Television, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed.
addiction. It destroys relationships, families, and lives. It makes individuals and the people who love them feel powerless. But the good news is that addiction is a treatable illness. At Aurora Recovery Center, we provide everything you need to build a solid foundation for your recovery with holistic evidence-based treatment tailored to each individual. Located in Gimli, Manitoba on the shores of Lake Winnipeg, Aurora can help regardless of whether or not you feel ready or have tried before. Aurora Recovery Center, recovery for life. Visit auroracoverycenter.com for more information today. You might not be injured if you slip and fall, or you might sprain your wrist or even fracture it. A severe wrist fracture can take at least two months to heal properly, and it can cause you to develop arthritis that keeps you from doing something as simple as picking up your child without pain. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lifetime impact. Take safer steps with WorkSafeSask.ca. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. beautiful Banff, Alberta. Check it out. RP Show continues on this Monday, live from Grey Eagle Resort. The Calgary viewers, actually all the viewers have picked up uh, on those stories. Kirk Sirota here in Calgary writes in and says, Peter Marr is a legend. Jeff the Stamps fan says 66 CFR. I think it was 770 CHQR. Sorry, Jeff. Don't get me on the radio lore. Okay. 66 CFR. Calgary Flames Radio. That's what CFR stood for. Look it up, ask a friend. I know more than you. Craig Warden in Calgary says, Tom's House of Pizza, best Hawaiian pizza in Calgary. Jason and Red Deer says, Rod getting all nostalgic about Calgary. Looks like he may never leave. And from Greg Sawatsky regarding the Rock and Horse Saloon where I used to work. I was a bouncer there, believe it or not. Nicknamed the Divorce Horse, Greg Sawatsky writes in and says, LOL, why the Divorce Horse? You had to be there. Well, let's bring him in now. Ten-year uh, CFL, our Grey Cup champion, Western Mustang Hall of Famer, <laughs> Mike Abu Meshrick. I like it. Eyebrows look good. Happy New Year, uh, Abu. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Long time no see, Ronnie. Great to see. Great to be back on the, on the sh broadcast. It's been far too long, my man. And before we maybe talk about some of the uh, things we've been doing since we've seen each other, what about this weekend of NFL football? They're calling it the best weekend of NFL playoff football ever. Would you agree with that assessment? See, I used to have more hair here. I just was pulling it out all weekend. It's just, it's just gone. I think those are the four best games of football I've seen in a row my entire life. They might be the best four games of football that ever existed, um, other than the 94 Banyan Cup, of course. 
Um, <laughs> it, 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 it was nonstop. Actually, you know me, Rod. Usually I'm doing something else while the games are on. Um, well, that was out the window. I mean, I, I, I was laser focused, glued to the screens. Um, Uncle Tom, I was just waiting for Uncle Tom or Tom Brady to come back, and then that, that, that just never happened, which uh, um, that just kept us guessing. You know, I was like, oh, here we go again. Tom Brady's coming back, but then he didn't. And then uh, the Bills came back, and then they didn't. And I still think that that, that KC Buffalo game would still be going on if not for the NFL rules. So uh, not a big fan of the flip a coin to see who wins the rules, but you, uh, that's the thing with rules. You got to have them and you got to follow them and you got to know what they are and you got to accept them. Well, Abu, I would, uh, I'm glad you went down the overtime rules road. Uh, Jeff Reinbold was on here last hour and he said the current CFL overtime rules are the best. These weren't, yeah, these were the rules when you played in the league. You're not that old. But do you think the NFL will change the rule after last night? And, that, and that's, what I, that's where I was getting at, Rod. I'm just sick of this, oh, I don't like this rule, let's change it. You know, you, you're getting away from, from what makes things great, is that you're not always going to, um, you know, th- th- there's lots of other, other, other rules that they can change that'll make the game, tweak, tweak the game to, to be better. Do I think they should get rid of the rule? I think it's just like the, um, like the NHL. I mean, excuse me if I'm wrong here, but they go to the shootout only, in, only during the regular season. Once you get to the playoffs, they play until there's a winner. They play hockey until there's a winner. Is that is that right, Rod? Correct. Until they until they, until they score a goal and there's a win. Until they shoot, turn the lights out. Yes. So and, so and you're think, saying they could play one rule for regular season, another for playoffs, and everybody would be fine with that? Well, I, I think when, when when hockey came out with the shootout, everyone recognized that's not football. I mean, that, well, obviously, it, it's not hockey, right? It's it's one on one, whereas it's more of a team sport. Um, NFL is the same way. I mean, they got to they got to get on. You know, if the game's at one o'clock, they got to get on to the four o'clock game. We all know NFL is is big money. Um, so the regular season, yeah, flip the coin. But when, it, during the dur- during the playoffs, I think they can play. Um, give both teams possession. Um, it, it, tweak the rules a little bit for the playoffs. I I don't think they. I don't. I think this is good playoff rule. A uh, good uh, overtime rules for regular season. But once the playoffs come around. You want to see the games, no matter what the sport is, you want to see the games won and lost playing that sport, playing for what those guys uh, are trained for. And, 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 I mean, 24 points in the last two minutes, those defenses were tired. They, they st- they, we would still be going back because it takes a lot more effort to be a DB than, than a, a DB or a defensive lineman that does an offensive lineman or, or a wide receiver. We know where we're going. We know what we're doing. And... Um, those defense would just continue to get beaten down and scored upon over and over and over again. So there needs to be some, some rule. Whoever loses isn't going to be happy. Um, but I don't think they need a huge overhaul with the rule. Well, you know what? I am totally fine with spending this entire segment on this discussion because it's all I've heard since last night around 9 o'clock uh, Mountain was was that so where do you stand on i was going to ask you this as a football guy and again 10-year pro you kind of addressed it there you're hearing people say the defenses are tired come the start of overtime so it's not fair so do you feel that both offenses should get a possession which would lead to many games which is what we have in the cfl and college football but how do you feel about the fact that the other that the bills never touched the ball do you think that's right or like the team aspect of hey you got to play defense too you know what, Rod? It doesn't matter if I think it's right or not. Those are the rules. If we want to go through all the rules that I think are right and not and wrong, we'll be here for more than <laughs> we'll be here all week. Um, those are the rules. So yeah, those are the rules that you play. with. Are they going to be tweaked? I'm sure they're going to be tweaked. Both teams should have a should have a possession for um, before the before they before they have a winner. But again, I'm okay with that during the regular season. But um, come playoff time, I feel a little bit ripped off I, as a. As a Bills fan, I guess I'm forced to be a Bills fan. I've been forced to declare my allegiance to uh, the Bills Mafia. Uh, I feel a little bit ripped off today. But that's why there was that big, 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 big roar when they did the coin flip and it turned out uh, in KC's favor. Those are the rules. Anyone complaining right now are just sour grapes. 
they knew that they were going to win the game because the coin toss. Is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, yeah, they had, they had a better chance to win the game because they had the ball first. And if you score a touchdown, which they had done, you know, two, three, as, at will for the past little while, you, you kind of had an idea of where, 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 the, um, where the play was going. That being said, Buffalo had every opportunity to intercept the ball and end the game on their position as well. So I'm not, uh, I'm not upset. I just think that maybe the rules could be tweaked because that's what the NFL does. They see, well, how can we tweak the rules? How can we make more people happy? How could we piss less people off? And I think that's the way to do it. From the general in Calgary, he says, Mike is right. It is what it is. I don't like admitting when Abu's right. And unfortunately, most times he is. That's why we don't have him on that much. Uh, Wayne in Victoria, B.C. says, it's a lot like refing talk. Now we have too much replay rules in the CFL. We're taking the human element out of the game. Unfortunately, nobody's perfect. Uh, I, when I say you're right, I agree with you. It is what it is. I don't think it needs to change. By the way, Abu, um, they want you down here at Grego Resort and Casino. So when we come down in a couple weeks' time, we'll be here for two more weeks. So I look forward to having you here at the venue. I think that would be a lot of fun. And when you said you've pledged your allegiance to the Bills, man, is that just because they've gone this far in the playoffs? Because I've known you for almost 20 years, and you've never had an NFL allegiance. But is it the yeah, Bills because you're a, but you're a Toronto guy? Well, that's my son forcing force my hand. Yeah, no, Toronto guy, you know, you know me, Rod. I'm a hater. No matter where I'm at, I'm, I'm a hater. I love the Leafs. I love Man City and everyone else. I just kind of like to hate on. Uh, and that's what it was. Growing up in Toronto, you either loved the Bills or you hated on them, and I, I hated on them. But, uh, but uh, my son called me out. Whenever the Bills are on, I'm watching it, and I'm cheering for the Bills. So um, I, I just don't know. When the Riders are playing, when the Leafs are playing, when Man City's playing, my heart is, inve- is vested. I'm vested in the game. Um, I guess that's somewhat true with the Bills as well. The Adam in Hamilton. Adam in Hamilton says, let's have the NFL do an OT shootout where kickers kick field goals, gradually increasing the distance until a winner is determined. That would be the worst. In the ultimate team game, we're not going to put it on the foot of a kicker to decide a game. We have about a minute. What has piqued your interest the most in this CFL offseason, Abu? Well, this is, this, is the, this is the doldrum, the desert of the CFL season. You know, I... I, I those one-year contracts sound like they're getting. I hope they're, I hope they're getting rid of them. Uh, it, it would make the game uh, a, a lot, a lot better. Um, you just don't know who's who's playing. I mean, even myself, right? We talked about this uh, in, in our personal lives. Um, when the CFL went away and came back, I just didn't know who was where and how was who was playing where. And oh, now this guy's here. And uh, um, I just got I just got used to having guys on certain teams, and now they're they're all moving again. I mean, do that year after year after year. It's it's easy to see how it's hard, how the CFL isn't isn't getting that traction with the younger fans. You know, like I just said, I just I grew up around the corner from the Bills, but I'm not a Bills fan because I like Jerry Rice, I like the playmaker, I like Emmett Smith, I like players, and the CFL really. I, I hope this time around they're really uh, connecting to that and and trying to and trying to find ways to have guys linked to teams. I don't even want to go and buy a jersey right now because I know that the guy's going to be traded next year, or not traded next year. He's going to sign a new contract with, with, with the with the highest bidder. So that is the thing that I'm most excited about. I, I don't think you can screw this one up. I think both sides of the both sides of the aisle want it. So let's make it. Back when I played, it was one and an option. So you played your year, and then your option year, you're allowed to go down to the states if it came up. If it didn't, you're tied back to the team. Yeah, well, I believe it'll never change because this is what the players want. It was a major concession given to them. Listen, we could talk about this all day. We will next time when you join me right here at the Gray Eagle, okay? Thank you. Banyan Cup champs, Western Mustangs. Good job, boys. You know I can get that one in, Rob. There you go. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk. Who lives in the past? Overtime is next, everybody. We'll be right back. You are watching on Game Plus Television, YouTube Live, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now.
might not be injured if you slip and fall. Or you might sprain your wrist or even fracture it. A severe wrist fracture can take at least two months to heal properly. And it can cause you to develop arthritis that keeps you from doing something as simple as picking up your child without pain. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lifetime impact. Take safer steps with WorkSafeSask.ca. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. A new year means a new you. Pick up a new ride to match at Capital GMC for 2022. Custom order the perfect vehicle for you or reserve a unit that's already on its way. Get into a GM certified pre-owned vehicle that's on our lot and ready to roll. We need your used vehicle too. We pay big and you don't even have to buy from us. Plus, our service department is always here to help. Get special pricing on name brand tires, tire storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. Start the new year right at Capital GMC in Regina. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is gonna have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Grey Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Hey Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Beautiful day here in southern Alberta. It's always a beautiful day in Banff. And the CFL winter meetings were there a few years ago. That was a great time. I wish I had more time there. We'll I go was, back. I was working. No, no, no. That, oh. Not this weekend. That was this weekend was perfect. In and out for coffee, but yes. the CFL winter meetings when when they were there, there wasn't enough time to enjoy. It's a bugger when work gets in the way, isn't it? I know. Um, but I guess the CFL winter meetings are going to be in Kananaskis next month, and we're going to be around. So that'll be fun. Mm -hmm. um, Ward is watching in Winnipeg as we get into viewer takeover for Taco Time, and this overtime segment for the Four Seasons Sports Palace. Ward says. Hi, Rod and Moose. It's minus 28 in the peg right now with a wind chill of minus 38. Hope it's warmer in Calgary. Jets-Penguins game on Sunday had lousy officiating, just so you have one complaint about refs on Monday. <laughs> Signed Ward in the peg with the <laughs> emoji, the oh, yeah. cold emoji. It's plus one. You looked it up? Thanks. Yeah. Plus one, but this is, the, this is the coldest day of the week. That's right. It's going to get warmer all through the week out here in Calgary. Very uh, comfortable environs. I do have to say, I have yet to master the watching two games at one time thing. I, I can't do it. I have a one-track mind. I can't watch two games at once. I wish I could. I know. Um, so I, don't, I, I admire you people. Where's that bell, by the way? Did you guys get rid of the bell? Where's the bell for you people? There, thank you. You people that could watch the Jets game yesterday and the NFL games, I, I can't because I tried Saturday night and all these comments are coming in to Kona Pally, one of our P1s. He's in Winnipeg. He says, uh, I feel like Rod's in a band doing a music podcast. Wouldn't that be something? With the guitars behind I play you. the guitar and the organ 
when I was a child. That's halfway to Justin Bieber. Did you get the list of who the guitars, four. the guitars were behind you? I couldn't read their autographs. It was... It was it's okay. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll cover that tomorrow. We're running out of time here. Yeah. My cousin Christine in Medicine Hat, she says, I've never seen a poll more one-sided. Uh, that's regarding should the NFL change its overtime rules for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center. Over 80% of you saying yes, they should. Adam in Hamilton says, don't think less of me, Rod. It was definitely a joke. That was with regards to the, having the kickoff to decide. Did you hear that we were talking no. about? He says kickers, back them off. Longer kicks to see who wins. Like okay. a game of horse. And he's basketball. saying he was just joking, so calm down. Um... I'm trying to not double up on people's comments. I try to only read one per person per hour. Uh, or per, per show. And I had something on my mind and I lost it. Damn. Squirrel. It had to do with the uh, shark club yesterday in our watch party. Oh, it was good. I'm still blown away. No, oh, John... John Burns in, uh, what was your super chat about Ed Whalen? I got to go back and find this. Well, the guy's paying money. I guess I shouldn't act like he's being annoying. He's paying money him. to get his, there it is. Any more nostalgia from Rod and soon we'll hear ring-a-ding-dong-dandy with his Ed Whalen impersonation, LOL. Oh, Listen, I don't associate Ed Whalen with the Flames. And I, he, I don't think he was called on the games on television when I lived here. I don't think. Peter Marr called the games for 30 years on the radio. Everybody knows Peter Marr. I think of Ed Whalen as last minute of play in the RP show. I think of Ed Whalen as stampede wrestling and smacking the wrestlers on top of the head with his microphone. In the meantime and in between time, this is Ed Whalen with another edition of Stampede Wrestling. That's my Ed Whalen, okay? Don't at me. So I feel like those Calgary stories are going to be very popular over the next race. They will. Peter Marr. Absolutely. Unreal. <laughs> he made everything sound so big on a Tuesday night. <laughs> right. Scotiabank Saddle Dome. What do we got tomorrow, Clark? Peter Labardi is right down here, right? Mike Richards. This is his town. Oh, boy. All He's right, got Moose. some impressions. See you tomorrow. Uh, thanks to Jeff Reinbold and Mike Abumeshwick today. And all of you for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow at noon Eastern right here on Game Plus. How about that? Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Right on. I like it. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Approved. Let's go.